Uh, this is a summarized dissenting opinion from myself. The court has rendered its judgment by a majority. I am, however, of a different opinion. At the heart of democracy are the people who will constitute the strand of governance that we have chosen as a country. On the 8th of August, 2017, millions of Kenyans from all walks of life yielded to the call of democracy and queued for many hours to fulfill their duty to our republic by delegating their sovereign power to their democratically elected representatives. This was an exercise that was hailed by many regional and international observers as largely free, fair, credible, and peaceful. That duty stands sacred and is only to be upset if there is any compelling reason to do so. That reason must affect the outcome of the election. The election was managed by the first respondent, chaired by the second respondent, who were assisted by hundreds of others to execute the mandate of the commission under Article 88 of the Constitution. At the end of the process, the second respondent, in accordance with Article 138.10 of the Constitution, declared the result of the election. Having received more than half of all the votes cast in the election, and at least 25% of votes cast in each of more than half of the counties, the third respondent was declared the president-elect. As the Chief Justice has stated, the case revolves around three fundamental questions. One, I want to repeat them. One, whether the election was conducted in, in accordance with the Constitution and the law. Two, whether there were irregularities and illegalities committed during the conduct of the election. And three, if there were irregularities and illegalities, what was the integrity of the election? In answer to th these three issues, my opinion is that the election was conducted in accordance with the Constitution of the law. And in fact, this first and second respondents to my satisfaction demonstrated that they had adhered to the directions given by the Court of Appeal in the case of the Independent and Electoral Boundaries Commission versus Maina Kiai, where the Court of Appeal cautioned, and I agree with them, that the results declared at the polling station are final. In fact, the polling station is at the heart of any election. It is what happens there that is to be assessed, and that is why its outcome is final. In any election, the ordinary Kenyan voter will ask themselves the following questions. One, was there a problem with the registration of voters? Two, were voters properly identified at the polling station? Three, were voters allowed to cast their ballots peacefully and within good time? Four, were the votes cast, counted, declared, and verified at the polling station to the satisfaction of all parties? If the answer to all these questions is in the affirmative, then the election has been conducted properly. The petitioners, in my view, did not present any material evidence to the standard required to upset the results returned to the National Tallying Center by the presiding officers in Forms 34A. Those results, counted and agreed upon by agents at the polling station, were not challenged by the petitioner. What was fiercely contested was the mode through which those results were transmitted from the polling station to the National Tallying Center. The first and second respondents urged that the transmission was conducted in line with the directions of the Court of Appeal in the Maina Kiai case. This process yielded the results that were streamed onto the public portal and which were not sufficiently, in my opinion, impugned during the trial. The decision of the voter at the primary locale of the election, that is the polling station, was unchallenged. How then can a process used to transmit those results for telling upset the will of the electorate? It was not proved that the voters' will during the conduct of elections was so affected by any irregularity cited so as to place this court or the country in doubt as to what the result of the election was. Challenges are to be expected during the conduct of any election. However, those challenges 
that occurred in this instance, and in my opinion, none occurred deliberately or in bad faith. And all fell outside the remit of the voter and his or her will ought not to supplant the voters' exercise of their right of suffrage. In summary, therefore, I respectfully disagree with the decision of the majority <coughs> and in accordance with Section 26.2 of the Supreme Court Act, I will issue my full dissenting judgment within 21 days. Just to join.